My name is Chase Deckerbutz, and I've been a blacksmith and bladesmith for over 20 years. I'm currently the demonstrating blacksmith for LaForge Weapons at the New Jersey Renaissance Festival and the Pennsylvania Renaissance Festival. My work can also be found at the Pittsburgh Area Renaissance Festival and King Richard's Fair in Carver, Massachusetts. During my off-season, you'll often find me at knife shows throughout the Northeast United States or teaching knife-making classes in my shop. Before we get started, I just want to say that working with acid can be very, very dangerous. So please, if you're unfamiliar with the safety steps necessary, don't do this at home. Now, let's do some science. Today I'm going to show you how to make ferric chloride. The main reason why I'm making my own is because the local store that I used to buy it from uh, no longer seems to readily carry it in stock. Uh, so it became easier for me to look for an alternative method and what I found is that I can actually make about six times the amount for about the same price. Uh, it's just a couple of common ingredients, one of which is muriatic acid, uh, which is a lower form of hydrochloric acid. It has some more impurities in it. Uh, you can pick this up at Home Depot for under $7.50 for an entire gallon. Uh, the other ingredient is hydrogen peroxide, and that's about a buck sixty. We also need a piece of steel wool, and I'll explain more about that in a moment. Now, when handling acids, always make sure that you're wearing proper safety equipment. Uh, I have my vinyl gloves on, I've got eye protection. Acid is a very dangerous thing, so you don't want any of it splashing up. Uh, I'm doing it in an outdoor setting, so I'm not really worried about fumes or anything like that, but still, do not breathe it in. First, I have a glass beaker and I've marked off how much I need. I'm going to pour out 450 milliliters of muriatic acid. Now muriatic acid has a slight yellowish color to it. Next, I'm going to take a piece of steel wool. This is 4 aught, so super fine steel wool. I'm just going to open it up a little bit and then put this into our muriatic acid. I don't have a glass stir stick, so I'm just using a common everyday straw, something that will not react to the muriatic acid. Now we're going to let this do its thing. What's going to happen is the muriatic acid is going to break down and it's going to uh, dissolve the steel wool. So we're going to end up having iron ions uh, in a solution of our hydrochloric acid. It's going to break down and become something called ferrous chloride. We'll let that take place and I'll be back. For expediency's sake, I started this batch last night. You'll notice that most of the steel wool has actually been dissolved and we're taking on sort of a grayish uh, blue color to our muriatic solution. Uh, it's good to point out this time not to have any open flames nearby because one of the uh, elements released is pure hydrogen from this reaction. Next, we're going to take our solution and we're going to mix it. So first, with our partially dissolved steel wool still in there, we're going to add it to a plastic container and then slowly we're going to rapidly oxidize our ferrous chloride by adding small amounts of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, we need about 900 milliliters. We're going to add it slowly and we'll notice a color change happening almost immediately. Be careful to just add a little bit at a time. This is creating an exothermic reaction 
So there's going to be a lot of heat released. And we'll wait for the bubbles to die down. Slowly add a little more. Just to give you an idea of what kind of an exothermic reaction we're expecting, our ambient temperature is about 61 degrees. And right now we're releasing about 20 degrees higher because of that exothermic reaction. At this point, the remaining steel wool has actually dissolved. And I'm adding the final amounts of the hydrogen peroxide. And now we have a nice diluted solution of ferric chloride. I just want to take a moment and uh, talk about the different chemicals that we can actually use. Uh, I'm actually making a double batch. The first batch that I use uh, or made, I used a 9% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, the second batch that I made uh, used only a 3%. Really, ideally, I think about 5% hydrogen peroxide, which you can find at uh, just about any beauty supply place. Just make sure, read the ingredients, uh, because sometimes they add something called trisodium phosphate uh, to the ingredient list as a stabilizer, and um, that also uh, neutralizes our acid. So we want to stay away from any hydrogen peroxide that's been balanced with trisodium phosphate. Right now I'm waiting for my solution uh, to become uh, non-effervescent. I want it to basically go flat, like flat cola. And the reason I want to do that is because we don't want any bubbles to actually form on the surface of our knife blade when we're etching or we're just going to get an uneven etch. So do yourself a favor, allow it a couple of hours to settle down for all the reaction to actually stop. And here I'm doing a quick etch just to show you that the acid is working. Uh, thanks again for watching. My name is Jay Steckervetz. You can find me at jwsblades.com. Uh, if you're going to do this at home, please remember to take all safety precautions necessary and keep some baking soda on hand for any spilled acid. Have a great day.